Hi folks, Jeb Haber here with Together Made. Today I'm going to be making the Pathfinder Compass Case. So this is a kit that we just released and uh, it's designed to fit a Sunto MC2 compass. So this is the compass that uh, Dave and Self-Reliance Pathfinder School uh, recommended and, and so we designed this kit together. Um, so this case fits that compass but it also fits uh, any number of other small items. So just for example, this is a, a small card wallet. Uh, fits nicely in there. Um, I've got this case on my belt and I've got a razor blade and one of these mid-sized Leatherman waves in here. So it doesn't fit the tall Leatherman, but the mid-sized ones it fits great along with something next to it. Um, so, you know, other ideas. Um, We've made a few little sheaths to, flip, to slide in there. Um, you know, this one would hold a couple cards. Um, this one holds uh, cartridges. Uh, so if you're out in the field hunting and um, you know, want to carry those extra three rounds, um, you know, it fits nicely in there and it's wet formed. So um, those are just simple, easy little projects that you can use to extend the uh, use of this case. It's, it's a nice size. It'll hang on the lanyard, which we'll show at the end, uh, or or on a belt, and these slots are two inch, so they'll fit a, a good size belt. Um, yep, yeah, so there's two options for how to sew this, and today we're gonna show um, this uh, traditional saddle stitch, uh, and then uh, we'll do a separate video on this crossover stitch. Um, so let's unbox this guy. So this is what the packaging looks like. Unbox it, and we'll just kinda go through what's in here, and then we'll start making it. Okay, so we've got Two hanks of thread, those are two meters each. That. We've got the case itself, and the grommets and snaps and everything come set. This is saddle soap for finishing later. And we got four and a half foot of USA made paracord. We'll set that aside for later. This is a little breakaway uh, for the lanyard, so we're going to install that so that it's Got a breakaway. Um, these are the sides. One of them says Pathfinder, the other is blank. This is a leather slicker tool we're going to use on, the, on one of the last steps. And then there's a piece of sandpaper that we're going to use to smooth out the um, slots in that slicker tool. So if you haven't done the saddle stitch before, you're going you're gonna to see a traditional saddle stitch now. So we're going to start by Undoing this thread. Let's see here. Okay. Take this tape off. Now, when you're doing just a normal saddle stitch, this is two meters. You don't need all of that for, for this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by taking this guy and splitting it in half. Okay. So, all right. So we're going to take that thread. We're going to push it through the eye of the needle, like so. Pull about six inches through, and then about two inches from the end, we're going to poke the needle through the thread, and then we're going to slide that down over the eye and pull it tight. Okay. So that's one side. Now we're going to take the needle and we're going to do the same thing on the other end of the same thread. So take the other needle, same thread, push it through the eye, pull six inches through, and about two inches from the end, poke it through. So it's piercing the thread, slide that down over the eye, pull that tight. Okay, so that's called locking the needles in. That's our first step. So we're going to Grab one of these, doesn't really matter which one. Um, the uh, curved part goes up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to sew the saddle stitch here, and then we're going to sew the opposite side, and then we're going to switch to the next piece. So you're going to hold your inside piece on, like so, and we're going to count down four holes one, two, three, four. And we're going to push our needle through the fourth hole in both pieces. One, two, three, four. So they're lined up. And we're going to pull it through. 
like so. Okay, so now we've got an equal amount of thread on both sides. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to go um, up. So we're going to go through the next hole up. Let's see if I can see that here. There we go. From one side, like so. And then we're going to take the needle from the opposite side and come through the same hole. So we're just trapping the leather in between while we go through the same hole. We're going to pull that snug and then we're going to go to the next one. So I've got this needle. I'm going to go through that second hole down, pull that through, and then I'm going to take the other needle, come through that same second hole down from the other side, like so. We're going to pull that tight. Now we're at the last hole, or the top hole, and we're going to go through that from this side, and then we're going to go through it again <coughs> from the reverse side. Okay. And the reason we started in hole four is that we're actually going to, now we're going to reverse the stitch and we're going to stitch back down. And so that'll make it stronger but it'll also make it match the bottom uh, when we, when we backstitch to finish it off. So you'll see that in a minute. Okay, so we're going to poke through. We're coming back down, so we're now we're in hole two. From this side, we're in hole two. From this side. Okay. And I'm going to pull these tight. It's one thing you need to do. This thread's strong. You pull it nice and tight. Not so tight that it tears the leather, but tight. Also, you know, we're trying not to pierce the, the thread when we go back through. It's tight in there, but if we push through like so, and then kind of pull up and out of the way, uh, and then we go down under that, um, typically gets that thread out of the way. And the reason we're doing that is just so that we don't pierce the thread and make it weaker in that point. Okay, so now I'm down to the fourth hole, which is the original one we started in. I'm going to pull through, grab the reverse side, pull through. Okay, so that's our first four. So those are doubled up, and that's one way to double them up, uh, is to start in that, that fourth hole, work your way up, then work your way back down. Now all those stitches are doubled, and that'll be nice and strong. Okay, so we're just going to keep going all the way down to this last hole, which is the 13th hole, I think. Okay, like so, through from one side, back through, from the reverse. Nothing to it. There we go. If you're having trouble getting them through, you can just wiggle the needle a little bit. That'll open the hole up a little bit. Or you could take an awl uh, if you want and open all the holes at the beginning. Um, they're all cut for you. They're all through cut, so there's no, no real need to do that unless, you know, for some reason you want to make it significantly easier. Um, it's not all that hard to start with, but... All right, so making my way down. Okay. All right. All right, so I'm coming down to my last couple holes here. So that's the second to last from that side. And this is the second to last from this side. Okay, I'm going to get down to my final hole. And I'm going to go through it from the first side. And then I'm going to go through it from the other side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to backstitch. Okay, so we actually aren't tying any knots in this, we just backstitch. So I'm going to come to hole number two. Going back up, come through from one side, pull that down out of the way and then come back through that same hole number two, see there, from this side, OK? 
Okay, so that's our first back stitch. Pull that tight. Now we're going to do the next one. Okay, pull that down. And there we are. So that's the second back stitch. So we're in hole number three. And so that we match the top, um, and we're looking at this is the back side. So, you know, we, we're going to cut and, and, and burn the ends of these. So, you know, we just always kind of think about where you want those burn ends. You shouldn't really be able to see them too much. But in this case, I think what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and so we've got one, two, three three double stitches there. So if I come through here like so, now I've got three doubles at the bottom and now there's two threads sticking out the back side. You could tie those in a knot if you want, but all you really need to do is knit them off. So there's about an eighth inch tag and then just take a lighter and just melt those guys. Okay. So now those guys aren't going anywhere. Okay. So that's our first run. We did this one. We're going to do that four more times, you know, and it's going to get a little bit trickier just because, um, you know, the leather starts to have this structure to it, but we're going to go ahead and do, um, and do this front side next. Okay. So, easiest way to remove these, I've found, is to hold the needle and then just grab the short end and pull it. Grab the short end, pull it. Take the other half of that thread. And I'll put three in the final kit just so that you have an extra one, just in case something goes wrong. Also, the, the crossover stitch. Um, requires more threads, so. Alright, so here we are. There's that guy. Same thing as we did before, I just lock that needle on. And I'm going to lock the other needle on this side, like so. Okay. And every once in a while you miss like that and just get it back through. Okay, pulled that tight, locked it in. All right, so same deal here. We're going to fold this over, line up the holes. I'm going to start at the top in hole number four. I'm going to go through the next layer in hole number four, two, three, four, and get equal amount of thread on both sides. And then I'm going to work my way to the top, same way as we did before. Okay, so let's through the fourth hole. Now I've got both of them from each side through the third hole down. Now I'm going to the second hole down. Got them coming through that side of the second hole and this side of the second hole. Okay. All right. Now. We're going to go through this top hole from both sides. Let's see if you guys can see this. Okay. Oh, I pulled that a little hard. Let me get that locked back in. And there we go. Yeah, if your needle comes off or something, just lock it back in. Um, Okay, so here we are. We've done those first stitches. We started in four, went to three, two, and now I've got both coming out of hole number one. I'm going to go back down, same as before. So second hole from this side, and then I'm going to go through that same hole, number two, from this side. Okay. I'm going to work our way all the way down to here again. It gets easier once you get past those doubles, but I like to do those aesthetically and I like to do those for strength. Okay, just work our way down.
Just working our way down with this saddle stitch. Pulling nice and snug. Going through from one side, pulling that out of the way. Grabbing the other side, same hole. Pull it snug and get the point. So I just have a couple holes left here. Going through here. So I'm down to two. I'm going to go through my last hole on this side from both sides. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did before, except this time. When we finish off that third stitch, we're going to put the tag ends on the, on the inside of the case instead of the front. So here we are. We're both coming out of the last hole. Okay, I'm going to go through hole two from that side, through hole two from that side. So that's both coming out of hole two. Go through hole three from that side. Go through hole three from that side. Opposite side, I should say. Okay, now I got everything's coming out of hole three. And our doubles are one, two, three. And remember, we started in hole four. So I'm going to go through hole four from the front side. And so now I've got those three double stitches there, three double stitches there. They look the same, same. And I'm going to just stop there, and I'm going to put my tag ends out here. Last time we put them here, because that was a, le a lesser visible spot. Now this time we're going to put them over here. All we're doing is just deciding if we want to go through another time and where we want to clip these. All right. So I clip those to an eighth of an inch. Now I just want, I just really just want to get the end of those. I don't want to get the leather scorch, and I don't really want to get into the rest of that stitching. I just want to get those little tag ends, push them down. All right, cool. So there we are. We are halfway. So again, we're going to pull on the short end of that, pull on the short end of that. Now, I'm going to grab my other thread, this other hank of thread here, and same deal. We're going to unwind that, tape off of there. Be careful here not to fit my thread, but there we go. Get all these little piece of tape here. All right, so let's unwind this guy. And this is waxed poly thread, if you're curious. This comes from Main Thread Company, made in the U.S. All right, this tape sticking to my fingers. Okay, so we're going to cut this in half again. We don't need all that. Now, I'm going to take our other piece. And remember, the curved part goes up, so it's going to slot right in there. So I'm just going to start on the front side. Oop, better do this. You get a bunch of wax buildup in there, too. You can, you can uh, use a lighter to clear it out. 
That was something Dave figured out. I hadn't thought of it, but that was a good idea. It was clever. Yeah, so maybe we'll try it. So there's a bunch of wax in there. Obviously, I'll let it cool down for a sec. Put that through. All righty. Ready to go. Needle on each end. Okay, so curve side up, the finish side out, meaning once this stitch is in place, that will bend in that direction and be out. Okay. So here we are. And I, oh, I'm just this one. Oh, interesting. So here's a scenario where these holes, they could use to be opened up a little bit. So I'm just going to open these guys up just a pinch. If you get into a scenario where the holes are not quite cut all the way through, or they're just a little tight, you can just use the needle to go through and open them up. Cool. Or an awl if you want to use an awl. So, all right. So I'm through hole one. I'm going to go through hole. Oops. I don't want to be in hole one, do I? All right. We're going to start in hole four. One, two, three, four. And there we are. Okay. So now I'm going to get halfway again. So. I am through hole four, and if I pull that out, that's what that looks like, hole four. Tuck that back behind. I'm going to go through hole three, both layers. It's kind of hard to see now because this other piece is in the way, so I think I'll have to hold it sideways a little bit. Okay. So same deal. We're going through hole three from both directions. You guys are probably pretty good at this now because we already done it twice. Okay. Hole two from both sides. And our first hole from both sides. All right. Now we're just going to work our way back down. So I started in hole four. I went three, two, one, and I'm going to saddle stitch all the way down to this last hole again. Again, if it gets tight, wiggling the needle is the key like this. Wiggle it. There's wax on the thread that helps it go through easier. Um, you know, you don't want to break a needle, so don't, don't force it into a table. You know, don't, don't do something like that, um, forcing it into a table. Um, that's how you break a needle. And you only got two needles in there, so don't break one. Okay. So there's three. Now I'm in hole four. Hole four. Hole five.
All right, so I'm through hole three from that side, through hole three, third from the bottom, second from the bottom, second from the bottom, bottom hole, from one side, now from the other. And in this case, we're going to do what we did here, which is we're going to back stitch until we have three stitches on the front side. So there's one back stitch. There's our second. Okay. And now our third from the front side to match is there. And we're just going to pull that snug. So I've got one, two, three, one, two, three of the doubles. I'm just going to nip those guys. Open that up, get in there, burn those little guys, push them down. Cool. All right, we're down to the last one. We're going to pull these. Pull this guy. Cool. Now we've got the other half of that thread that we cut in half. Going to stick that through there. Pull our six inches through. Two inches from the end. Pull that snug. Lock that guy in. Now lock the other guy in. Second needle. There we go. All right. So that guy needs to be clipped because he got a little mushroomed out. It's easier to just clip it. There we go. All right. So this is our final final stitch line here. So we've got this little springy, and we're going to do the same thing over here. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top in hole four, right there. I'm going to go through the fourth hole of this guy. One, two, three, four. Even on both sides. And we're going to go through hole three from one side. Gonna go through hole three from the other side. Cool. Pull snug. Hole two. And hole two. And then hole one. And hole one. All right. So nothing special about this last one. Just going to work our way all the way back down to there. The nice thing about this is you could do it just about anywhere. I'm back in the wood shop in front of a fireplace right now, but uh, it's not a bad place to be. But it could be camping, it could be watching a game, watching a show, it could be, you know, out in the woods. You really don't need much to do this. Just this kit, a few little tools. Really, in this case, we just need scissors and a lighter. Uh, I am going to use some pliers in a minute, but not strictly necessary. Okay. All 
Every time, tighten that up. Number one mistake I see people make is they don't pull their stitches tight, and so they're standing up. So that means that when this is sitting on your belt, if your stitches are hand, you know, standing up proud, they're going to rub, and eventually they're going to they're going to wear out. So let's get through here. Pull it snug. Get through here. There we go. Pull it, pull it snug. Not crazy tight, but you want those stitches to lay, to lay flat. In some cases, guys will say that hole's a little bit tight. In some cases, leather workers will, will actually cut the, uh, the groove line. They'll recess it so that the stitches lay flush um, or below the surface. And that's not something we're teaching in these, these kits, but certainly a way to, to keep those stitches lower. I haven't had any of these fail as a result of the stitches, so I think we're in good shape. We just have to make sure we, we just pull them snug. All right, so that's third from the bottom. Pretty sweet. Here we go. Second. All right, I'm going to go through the bottom. There we go. And again here. All right, there we are. Now we're going to come back up, and this time uh, we're going to put our, our, our three stitches visible here, um, and we're going we're gonna to clip off on the back side. So I'll just start from the front side. There's one from the front side. Okay, there's our second from the front side. All right, so this is our third from the front side. And that's where we're going to stop. So now I've got one, two, three here doubled and one, two, three doubled here. So pull these snug, going to clip these. You got to melt them. Cool. All right. So now we've got a functional case. And what we're going to do now is we're going to keep working the materials. So we're going to teach a couple other techniques. So there's that compass in there. That's pretty sweet. That's a good fit. All right, cool. Well, next step, here we are. We're going to take this slicker tool I made for you and, uh, and this sandpaper. And we're also going to take this guy, which is our saddle soap. We're going to open that up because we're going to need that. So. There's our saddle soap. This is a bigger version of that. Um, and uh, I'm going to grab a rag, a little rag here. All right, so first thing we need to do with this slicker, what we're going to do with it is we're going we're gonna to basically work these edges until they're slick, uh, they're glossy. And so you don't need all those notches rounded out, but we are going to need to round out it looks to me like we're only going to need the small notch. So take your sandpaper and round this out. So I've got the smallest notch and I'm going to round those edges over. I'm going to ease those edges. Okay. And, and then I'm really going to round out this, the middle too. I want it to be nice and smooth. We're going to use that to form the leather. Okay, so I've kind of gotten rid of all the sharpness there, rounded it out. And if you hear scraping, you know, just pause and sand it a little bit more. Okay, so that's sanded out. Now what I'm going to do is on all these edges, 
just the edges. Uh, we're going to come back and saddle soap the whole thing in a minute. But all these edges, I'm going to take a little bit of this. I'm just going to wipe it on that edge, and this is going to help us with the, with the burnishing. Okay. So I'm just going to do that one first. So I've got that saddle soap on there. I'm going to take my slicker, and I'm just going to work that edge. Now in a more sort of advanced finishing technique, we might bevel that edge first. And we'll demonstrate that in some projects later on. But for this, you can just go ahead and just kind of work it, work it till it's slick. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take a ton of pressure. So I'm going to put a little bit on this corner here, like so. And really kind of work that. That looks real nice. Okay, and then I'm going to come across, it doesn't matter which way you go, but I'm <clears throat> just sort of demonstrating that I want this finished. And so for me, this handwork that we do at the end is really important. I think it really makes, it really makes the case. That was a bad pun. It really makes, <laughs> it really makes the project have this kind of beautiful hand worked feel. And to me, the mark that you leave from your craftsmanship just tells a story of the job you did. And I just think that's cool. So, so I'm working that so it's nice and smooth. I got that one smooth. You know, there's no real trick to this. If it's if it's scrap scraping, like this one has none of the saddle soap on it, and if I, like, I'll, I'll use a part that's not sanded, and it's, it's scraping. You don't want to hear that. But if I take the saddle soap, I wipe it on there, and you can almost hear it, like, making a little bit of a sticky noise instead of a scraping noise. But there we go. So that is nice and smooth. And that's not taking a ton of pressure, a ton of time. But the net result is this has a lot better look and feel to it. Okay, so I'm just going to get the transition and this bottom edge. So. so now I've got this whole side done and this side I've got left to do. Um, and then, um, you know, we'll just work our way around the top flap too. So we're going to take that, go around the top flap. We don't want to get this saddle soap all over the front of it yet. We're just kind of focusing on the edges. We're going to do the front in a minute, but I want to do it in a consistent movement. I don't want to kind of do it cattywampus. So I'm going to come around to this edge. I'm on the flap working that. I'm kind of holding, working my way up and holding it so that I'm not like, cre you know, folding the leather or anything. I'm supporting it while I do this. This is just sort of a, just a little bit of a technique for when you're working on something that's, that's not super, you know, thick. Uh, you kind of have to support it while you do the, the burnishing. Okay, so I'm working my way around. Okay. Make sure if I got saddle soap all the way around. I'm just going to reapply there. All right. So you get the point. We're going to do all our sides. They're going to look nice and slick, look glossy and beautiful. And, and there you go. I still have a couple to do, but I think you get the point. All right. Next step. We got a couple more steps. This thing's looking great. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little water. I'm going to put it in a container. This is the, oops, this is the uh, lid of the saddle soap. So the bigger one, same stuff as you guys have. So I'm going to get this rag nice and wet and then I'm going to rub it in the saddle soap. I'll use the same container you guys are using. And so it's pretty wet and I'll start in the back and what I'm going to do is work this saddle soap in with the water and continue to get saddle soap on my rag and make sure that it, it stays wet. The, the moisture just helps it 
absorb consistently. And I want a little bit of a, a little bit of a foam frothing, I don't know what you want to call it, a little bit of frothing there. And that just tells me that I've got enough saddle soap on. Um, and if it's not doing that, you need more water and more saddle soap. It's not dripping wet, you can see, but it's, it's damp. Okay, so I got the back. I'm going to open the lid. I'm going to keep going, add a little more water, a little more soap. It's going to work in a circular motion. I'm going to get around the button. Okay. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a little more soap on, and I'm going to do the whole side. I like to just kind of do it all in one pass, and that makes, makes it have a consistent look. Okay, so a little more soap, a little more water, a little more soap. Now I'm on the, the front side. Just going to work that in. I don't want to spend a ton of time working it into this Pathfinder logo because I don't want to remove that burn. That burn, um, if you really scrub it, will... Yeah, you'll start to remove a little bit of that. But so there we go. So now I've got a really consistent looking finish. And if it's streaky or doesn't look quite right, just get a little bit more water, a little bit more soap, and go over the whole thing in a consistent pass again. I'm going to get the sides. I'm going to clean the stitches while I'm doing that. Now they might have some residue on them. I'm going to kind of work my way through here. I'm going to turn it over, get the other side. All right, that's looking great. Cool. So remember, I, I still got a little bit of burnishing to do, but uh, this is looking awesome. All right, so I'll come back with a dry rag and, uh, and just kind of wipe it all down. Um, just kind of, you can come back and buff it out a little bit too. So, so that's the... Uh, the finishing with the saddle soap and that step just gives it protection and gives it this kind of beautiful rich look. Um, so I like to, to use that step in these kits. If you were making this out of a bridal leather or something like that, you would use the saddle soap for the burnishing but you wouldn't, you wouldn't need to do the, the face like this because it's so stuffed with waxes that it wouldn't take that finish. So, all right, so last step here. See, I got saddle soap all over my hands but Here's the lanyard, and you know you can figure out how you want to attach your compass. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate um, how to um, attach this pop rivet, or I don't know what we call it. Anyways, it's just a it's a release mechanism. So I'm going to I'm going to go through the compass in this case. I'm going to pull that tight. Okay. So now I'm, I'm through, and I'm sure you could do this any number of ways. I'm going to stick it in the case. I'm going to, we've got these two grommets that we installed for you. I'm going to clip that. I'm going to go through this grommet, and then I'm going to just make sure that's sitting right. And then I'm going to go through the other grommet. And again, this is just the way that I would do it. I think there's plenty other ways. And if you're not carrying a compass, if you're just carrying something else, then you know, just ignore the compass part and look, watch this part. Okay, so, so I've got my paracord. I'm going to get it even, or close enough to even. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make it even. So I'm just going to size it. And is that where I want it hanging? I don't know. Um, seems fine. If you want it shorter, go ahead and shorten it. But for, for these little release mechanisms, you know, and the reason you do that is so that if you get hung up on something, it pops off. Um, so I'm just going to take this little pair of pliers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a couple of inches of the inside of the paracord out. And I'm going to clip that off. And that's going to give me some space inside the paracord. Um, you know, a little bit of a, of a 
you know, dead space. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this rivet put this clasp on and then I'm going to tie a knot in it at the very end. And that very end is where we've got that that material removed and so that that knot will it'll be big enough to hold in there but it'll, it'll be small enough that it'll fit. If you don't remove the material um, you don't have enough room inside of the fitting. So I'm just going to take care of the end of that guy. All right. Now I'm on the other side. And I'm going to pull, pull some of that out. A couple inches maybe. I'm going to cut it. Bring that around, push it through the other side. Okay, tie my knot in the end. Pull it tight. All right, now I've got these two and they go together. Okay, so that's going to be nice and strong for me. It's probably a bit long. So there we go. That's our case. Looks awesome. This is strong, but if I get caught on something, it's, it's going to pop for me. Okay, so that is the compass case build. And that's a beautiful little case. Like I said, you can use it for all sorts of stuff. And uh, I wear it on my belt quite a bit, but I imagine, imagine if you were you know, using a compass a lot, it'd be great to have around your, your uh, lanyard as well. Um, so I think that is, that's the build. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, they're available on Self-Reliance Outfitters right now. Uh, we'll have some on togethermade.com as well. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy the kit. See you next time.